Okay, so that's just a summary of C1, C2, and C3. So everything from analytic geometry. Okay, so let's take a closer look at restrictions on variables. <coughs> but not too close a look. All right, here we go. Feel free to type a question, though, guys, anytime you got them. Okay, I just made up this question here. You're renting a bus to go on a trip. After COVID's done, you're going to celebrate. Um, okay, so you're renting a bus. So the bus company charges you in a weird way. They charge you $225 to rent the whole bus. Let's just draw a quick pick. Okay. There's your bus, kind of. Um, so it's 225 for that guy. And then they're also charging you $50 for the gas. And they're oddly charging you $2 for each seat that you take up on the bus. So every time you stick someone in a seat, uh, you have to pay $2. So does anyone think, like, just take a second and tell me if you think you could write an equation to represent this relationship. It's tricky. Don't type it in the chat yet. So let's say our two variables, so we always have two variables. So our two variables in this situation would be cost, like how much does the bus cost? It's the obvious one. And what would the other variable be? Does anyone know? What's the other variable in this relationship? Just type it in the chat if you know the other variable. Yeah, Lizzie's saying the number of bus seats, for sure. Because that's the only th other thing that's gonna make a difference. Like it's $2 for each, each seat, but you don't really know how many seats you're using. So your other variable is going to be the number of bus seats. So those are the, the two variables means like the two things that you're comparing. So you're comparing like how much will it cost and how many seats do you need? So let's use C to represent the cost and let's use N to represent the number of seats. So see if you can make an equation for this relationship, but just give everyone a minute before you write it. So it'll be like C equals something. <laughs> so try to write the equation of this relationship. Don't type it in the chat yet. You can type it in the chat, but don't hit enter. I can't really make a straight line. Oh, yes. Let's assume we're only renting one bus. Good point. Only renting one bus, yeah. But how, how long does the gap? Pardon? How long does the gas? Uh, you just pay a straight flat fee for gas. You just pay the $50 and that's it. Okay. Yeah, it seems kind of cheap. I bet your buses are like gas guzzlers. Do buses run on gas or diesel?
Well, Google says the vast majority of buses run on diesel fuel because it's more economical. Anyways, I don't know if that's true. Okay, if you guys think you got it, hit enter. Tell me what you got in your chat in the chat. Okay, so I see two equations, and they're the same. Oh, three, and they're all the same. So it's good news. Ah, fourth one, still the same. Okay, this is what people are saying in the chat. C equals 2N plus 275. So here we have the rate of change. Sorry. Here we have the rate of change, $2 per person or per seat, sorry, per seat. And then the 275 would represent the cost to rent the bus and the gas. So yeah, that's a tricky part. You kind of got to combine those two things because that's your like, kind of like your initial cost. Like you have to pay 275 for no matter what. If you want a bus, yeah. Nice, Lizzie, yeah. Why intercept is the initial cost? Yeah. So if that's how you guys did it, like the way that we always write equations is like Y equals MX plus B. And you know that the rate of change is your $2 per seat. And your initial cost is the combo of these things, 275. Nice. Yeah, Michael, you got it too. Great. That's awesome. Okay, so now my next question would be, because the title of this is restrictions on variables, what do you think would either, would C or N have a restriction on it? And a restriction means like, would there be a maximum number that C or N could be? And what, what would that have to do with? Just type it in the chat if you know. So like, would, would there be a maximum or minimum value that N or C would be? Okay, Jake says they both have a maximum, and why do they both have a maximum? I agree with Jake, but why? And what is the maximum? Okay, so Raina's saying there's only so many seats on a single bus, plus it's impossible to have less than one bus seat. Yeah. So if you're renting a bus, I guess you could rent it and then nobody could go on it. <laughs> Maybe it's just going to stay parked. <laughs> so I guess you could have zero. That's ridiculous, but it could happen. Um, yeah, Jake's saying because there's a set number of seats in a bus, so the cost can only go so high. Exactly. Um, Lizzie's saying, N is the number of seats, so how many seats are in the bus? There's only a certain number of seats, and the C depends on the N. Yes, you guys are all right. Totally. I would say there's a min and a max. So let's try to figure out what those are. Who knows how many seats are on a bus? I should have looked that up. How many, I'm Googling it, seats are on a school bus? Um, it's just telling me the number of passengers. Who's been on a school bus recently? But there's always a different amount of passengers, like every day or something. <laughs> yeah, you're right. Well, the maximum seating capacity is 72. Do you think that's like three per seat? <laughs> <laughs> If so, that's like 24 seats. Let's assume there's 24. Oh, does the driver count? Nah. Let's say no, because like they got to provide their own driver. But good point. Yeah, two to three per seat. I agree. 
Okay, so let's say that the bus has 24 seats. We'll just make that assumption. So there's 24 seats on this bus. I don't know if that's correct. So now tell me what do you think the max, let's figure out the max for N and C. What would the max values be for N and for C? Like, what do you think the maximum of these variables could be? Oh, yeah, because it's for each bus seat, right? Yeah, okay, got it. So, like, what's the max for N? That should be an easy one. N represents the number of bus seats. And we're not counting the driver. So, what would be the maximum you could input for N? Twenty-four. Yeah, it's got to be right. You only have twenty-four seats, so the max, the the highest that the variable n could be is twenty-four, and then what's the highest that the variable c could be? Okay, Raina says three hundred and twenty-three. Yeah, because according to your equation, um, ah, lost my mouse. Here you go. Uh, according to your equation, C equals 2 times 24 plus 275 if you have 24 seats. Yeah, Michael, you got it too. So 2 times 24 is a 48 plus 275 equals 323. So the most money that the bus company will cost is, or the bus will cost is $323. If you use all 24 seats on the bus, you'll have to pay $323. And the maximum number of seats on the bus is 24. So that's kind of what it means to have restrictions on variables. Like this is your equation, but you can't put like N equals 5,000 that there's not 5,000 seats on a bus. So that's what restrictions mean. Does that make sense? Do you guys have questions? Oh, let's figure out the minimum before we go. So what would be the minimum values on the variables for N and for C? What do you guys think for the minimum? What's the smallest number of seats you could have Yeah, Raina's saying minimum for N is zero, which is so weird. Like, why would you rent a bus and then you not even use any seats? But you never know. Something came up. <laughs> and how much would that cost to rent, to have, like, no seats used? Yeah, Jake says 275, exactly. Yeah, that's your initial value, the 275. <laughs> yeah, Michael and Lizzie, yeah. Nice. Um, okay, so that's how you do restrictions on variables. That's the uh, main thing I omitted from this.